Once again, I pronounce you husband and wife. Now kiss her again. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best friends episodes. Danger! Ah, <laughs> uh huh, Unagi. For this list, we're looking at episodes of this sitcom that never get old, which is saying a lot given how many times we've rewatched the entire series. In case you somehow haven't seen the show, there are about 10 seasons worth of spoilers here. Which Friends episode is your lobster? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. The One With All The Resolutions Monica and Chandler's secret gains another insider with Rachel overhearing a naughty phone call. Laundry, huh? Is that my new nickname? <laughs> Aww. You know what your nickname is, Mr. Big. <laughs> of course, the phone conversation that solidifies this episode as a classic is shared between Ross and Joey. Ross makes a New Year's resolution to try something different every day. And if it irks a tight-lipped Chandler, all the better. This backfires when Ross buys a pair of leather pants. Shrinking in the wash is one thing. Shrinking on a date is a misfortune that only happens to Ross. He's so desperate that he resorts to asking Joey for guidance. Between the powder and lotion, Ross's situation goes from mortifying to world-ending. What color is it? <laughs> what difference does that make? Well, I'm just if the paste matches the pants, you can make yourself a pair of paste pants and she won't know the difference. Amazingly, Chandler keeps it together when he sees a pantsless Ross, but he eventually lets his pent-up insults loose. Number 19, the one with the football. The friends are always there for each other, but that doesn't mean they can't get competitive. Tensions rise during a game of Thanksgiving football. Joey and Chandler compete for the affection of a Dutch woman named Marcha, but the main competition is between Ross and Monica. I'm pulling what? It's second down. Okay, it's second down. Take all the second downs you need. <laughs> I heard that. Well, I said it loud. A childish sibling rivalry festers into adulthood with everything coming down to this one game. It's winner takes all. And by all, we mean a troll nailed to a 2 by 4 For all the heartwarming moments the show gave us, sometimes it's fun seeing everyone at their most spiteful. The fact that they're bickering over something so petty, on Thanksgiving no less, only adds to the comedic stakes. The important thing is that the Gellers come together in the end. Sorta. Hey, it's starting to snow. <laughs> Go, go. Number 18, The One with the Rumor. From one Thanksgiving special to another, this episode takes us back to a simpler time when nobody had heard of Brangelina. People were all about Benifer. No, not Affleck and Lopez, Brad and Jen. <laughs> yeah. Brad Pitt appears alongside his then wife, although not as a love interest. Oh my god, he's. Look at the way he's just staring at me. I think he's trying to mount something to me, but I can't make it out. <laughs> Pitt plays Will, who hated Rachel throughout high school. So much so that Will and Ross cooked up a rumor that definitely wouldn't make it onto a sitcom today. Nevertheless, Pitt's Emmy-nominated turn showcases what an underappreciated comic talent he is. His presence on the show was funny in 2001, and considering what's happened since, it's hard not to find some unintentional meta-humor in this feud. We also have to give a shout out to Joey's Thanksgiving pants. All right, where's that turkey? <laughs> Joey, those are my maternity pants. No, no, these are my Thanksgiving pants. Number 17, the one with the videotape. Going into season eight, we all wondered who the father of Rachel's baby would be. It's revealed to be Ross, which raises another question. Who made the first move? Both give conflicting accounts, but Ross is the only one with video evidence. Maybe I need to be more careful. I mean, am I sending you these signals right now? You know what? You know what, Rachel? Just, just drop it. No, please show me how I begged you. I can show you. I have it on videotape. It's not quite as disturbing as it sounds. You see, Ross was enduring a dry spell in the bedroom. Joey helps him out by sharing a story guaranteed to end in intercourse. It's all about presentation, though, and Ross's storytelling skills are rusty. He attempts to improve his game with a video camera, resulting in the truth being captured on film. The payoff is one of the show's best, with the power of Joey's Europe story delivering on its promise. Now I'm so happy. <laughs> what are you talking about? You use the Europe story. That's the magic story you use when you want to have sex. Number 16, the one with the jellyfish. 
As season four commences, it appears Ross and Rachel might get back together. There's just one thing, and 18 pages front and back, standing in their way of reconciliation. Were they or were they not on a break? She wants me to take responsibility for everything that went wrong in our relationship. I mean, she goes on for five pages about, about how I was unfaithful to her. We were on a break! It's a debate that persists throughout the series, although matters reach their boiling point in this episode. Unable to hold his tongue any longer, Ross makes his feelings abundantly clear, igniting one of his biggest and funniest blowouts with Rachel. They might be over for now, although the episode also sees the relationship between Chandler and Monica begin to take shape. We're still almost a season away from London, but Chandler demonstrates just how far he's willing to go for her. By the way, the jellyfish thing, it's just a myth. I think you're great. I think you're sweet and you're smart, and I love you. But you will always be the guy who peed on me. <laughs> Number 15, The One in Vegas. Chandler and Monica's relationship eventually takes them to Vegas with marriage on their minds. While their storyline offers laughs and romance, there's another pairing that steals the show here. We are, of course, talking about Joey and his identical hand twin. And I wrote a song for us. This hand is your hand. <laughs> this hand is my hand. Oh, wait, that's your hand. <laughs> No, wait, it's my hand. <laughs> all right, all right, let's talk about Ross and Rachel. This two-parter features several playful moments between the former couple, from Ross misinterpreting Rachel's lack of clothes to a mishap with a mustache. Even as old feelings are rekindled, we did not foresee them getting drunkenly married. Friends knew how to end a season on a cliffhanger, and this is among the most shockingly hilarious reveals. Remember when Ross vowed to only get one divorce in 1999? Turns out he couldn't even keep that resolution. Hello, Mrs. Ross! <laughs> well, hello, Mr. Rachel! <laughs> Wait, okay. Number 14, The One with Ross's Sandwich. The show has taken Ross to some surprisingly dark places, which is usually where the character is at his most humorous. After losing his second wife and apartment, Ross hits a new low when somebody at work eats his beloved turkey sandwich. I am 30 years old, okay? I'm gonna be divorced twice and I just got evicted. That sandwich was the only good thing going on in my life. Ross decides he is done letting others walk over him, adopting a tough guy persona. He takes it too far, with everyone at work thinking he's unstable, which, yeah, hard to refute. Upon learning that his boss took his sandwich, we see Ross unleash his rage. Actually, we don't see everything, but hearing Ross's meltdown echo across New York is even funnier. You, 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 you threw my sandwich away. My sandwich, my sandwich. If they hadn't gotten Ross on the proper medication, this probably would have been the beginning of his supervillain origin story. Number 13, the one with Monica and Chandler's wedding. Of all the show's wedding episodes, Monica and Chandler's had the most buildup. As season seven nears its conclusion, it appears the couple will make it down the aisle without a hitch. In classic sitcom fashion, Chandler goes missing hours before he's supposed to tie the knot. Adding to the suspense, Joey struggles to make it to the wedding as he acts opposite a monumentally inebriated Gary Oldman. I'm wearing two belts. <laughs> Are you drunk? No. Yes, you are. No. The two-parter just keeps building tension, with the revelation that Monica might be pregnant. For all the farcical laughs, there's a genuine sense of dread that things might not work out. Fortunately, Monica and Chandler's dream wedding comes together as hoped, although someone else is having a baby. Again, Friends never disappoints with its cliffhangers. Look at them. Oh, and they're gonna have a baby. Uh -huh. Number 12, The One with Unagi. In any other episode, the highlight would be Joey attempting to find a lookalike or Chandler finding a belated Valentine's present for Monica. However, this episode belongs to Ross as he tries to teach Rachel and Phoebe about Unagi. Unagi. <laughs> Isn't that a kind of sushi? <laughs> No, it's a concept. Yeah, it is, it is. It's freshwater eel. Going to show how little Ross knows, Phoebe is right. Unagi is indeed freshwater eel, which Ross apparently confuses for zanshin, a Japanese martial arts term that translates to remaining mind. Regardless, Ross goes to great lengths to prove that he's always aware. 
although he can't foresee Rachel and Phoebe getting the jump on him. He doesn't have much luck with a self-defense teacher either, which finds Ross at his creepiest. I mean, they're, they're my friends. In fact, I, I, I was married to one of them. Uh, <laughs> Let me get this straight, man. You attacked your ex-wife? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I tried. Seriously, do we need to do a list of times that Ross should have gotten arrested? Number 11, the one with the holiday armadillo. Christmas has Santa, Rudolph, and Frosty, but the holiday armadillo is here to spread Hanukkah cheer. As priceless as it is seeing Ross improvise the most random holiday mascot ever, the episode is surprisingly relatable for interfaith families. You for Hanukkah too? Because I'm part Jewish. <gasps> you are? Me too! <laughs> because armadillos also wandered in the desert? You empathize with Ross wanting to teach Ben about his Jewish roots, only to be upstaged by Chandler as Santa and Joey as Superman? As Ross tries to get closer to his son, Phoebe attempts to keep Rachel as a roommate in another sweet storyline. Whatever holiday you celebrate, it's an episode we all like to revisit at that time of year. We just wish we could have been in the writer's room when somebody pitched the idea of Ross dressing as a shelled mammal. We're, we're lighting the candles. Come on. Oh. I understand why Superman is here, but why is there a porcupine at the Easter Bunny's funeral? Number 10, the one with the blackout. This is not my gum. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> and now you're choking. A standout of the first season, this storyline revolves around a power outage that interestingly stemmed from an episode of Mad About You, which aired the same night on the same network and also featured Lisa Kudrow. The blackout brings all of the friends together, with the exception of Chandler, who gets stuck in an ATM vestibule with Jill Goodacre. Gum would be perfection. Could have said gum would be nice, could have said I'll have a stick, but no, 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 no. For me, gum is perfection. <laughs> the episode is so iconic that Goodacre is better known to younger generations for this cameo than her actual modeling. Of course, the real highlight is Ross trying to get out of the friend zone with Rachel. As he attempts to tell her how he really feels, though, cats and Italian guys keep getting in the way. <laughs> Number 9. The One with the Morning After Ross and Rachel had a rocky romance to say the least, and this is the episode that changed everything. After sleeping with another woman, Ross attempts to shield Rachel from the truth. However, the cat's let out of the bag thanks to Rachel's secret admirer, Gunther. Please tell me you didn't say anything to Rachel about me and the girl from the copy place. I'm sorry. Was I not supposed to? That's funny while also being heartbreaking, which pretty much sums up the tone of this episode. As uncomfortable as matters get, the setup still makes room for a lot of humor, particularly with the four other friends trapped in Monica's bedroom as Ross and Rachel break up. How was she? She was awful. She was Horrible. not good, not good. Nothing not compared good. to you. <laughs> she, she was different. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> that being said, it ultimately works up to a tear-jerking and honest scene in which the couple realizes this is the end. This can't be it. I mean... <sighs> then how come it is? Number eight, the last one. We only ordered one. <laughs> You know it's twins, right? Oh yeah! These are the faces of two people in the know! Even the best sitcoms don't always have satisfying conclusions, especially after being on the air for 10 years. Thankfully, friends delivered, leaving everybody on a pitch-perfect note. Monica and Chandler unexpectedly bring home twin babies, Joey and Chandler say goodbye to the foosball table as well as each other, and Phoebe helps Ross race to the airport to stop Rachel from going to Paris. Phoebe, slow down! Do you want to get to Rachel in time? Yes, but I don't want to die in your cab! You should have thought of that before you got in! The episode strikes the ideal balance of humor, excitement, and heart, with a rewarding payoff as Rachel does get off the plane. She got off the plane. <laughs> not ashamed to say that we still get choked up every time we watch the bittersweet final scene, which fades out on Monica's purple door and its iconic yellow frame. Number 7, The One with Ross's Wedding yeah, I hope Ross didn't think we just went in there because we were uncomfortable being out here.
I hope he did. Complete with several epic cameos, the season four finale was the show's most ambitious outing yet, as Ross's nuptials brought all of the friends to London. Well, except for a pregnant Phoebe and a reluctant Rachel, who's in denial about still being in love with Ross. Upon realizing her true feelings, however, Rachel hops on a plane to crash the wedding. This leads to perhaps the show's best cliffhanger, with Ross ruining his second marriage before it even starts. I, Ross, take the Emily, take the Rachel. The real love story here, though, is between Chandler and Monica, who surprised the audience and themselves by sleeping together. Number six, the one with the proposal. Oh, let me see, let me see your hand. <laughs> Why do you want to see my hand? I want to see what's in your hand. I want to see the trash. Before Chandler and Monica could say I do, they had to get engaged. While the subplots involving the other friends provide plenty of laughs, this hour-long episode appropriately belongs to Chandler and Monica. Chandler is all set to pop the question, but the moment is spoiled with the return of Richard, who's still in love with Monica. Oh my God. I know, but just let me say it. Oh my God, Richard. What? I'm Chandler. Although this last-minute love triangle could have backfired, it fortunately doesn't turn anyone into a bad guy and offers several strong character moments, serving as a perfect end to Richard's story arc and the beginning of Monica and Chandler's life together. The titular proposal is everything we could have hoped for, closing the season with a heartwarming declaration of love. Monica, <laughs> will you marry me? Yes. Number five. The one where Ross got high. I love Jacques Cousteau! <laughs> I wasn't supposed to put beef in the trifle! I wanna go! Whereas some shows are known for their annual Christmas or Halloween specials, Friends made a habit out of shining the spotlight on the often overlooked Thanksgiving. As we near the top of our list, we're singling out this season six episode, in which Ross and Monica's parents learn about her relationship with Chandler. Mr. and Mrs. Geller aren't Mr. Bing's biggest fans, since they think he got high in their house during college when it was actually Ross. They warm up to him, however, after discovering several bombshells about their own children. There will Hurricane Gloria didn't break the porch swing, Monica did. <laughs> Museum for a year! <laughs> Monica and Chandler are living together! It's Rachel who steals the show, though, with her shepherd's pie trifle, a hodgepodge of custard, meat, and jam that only Joey could love. It tastes like feet. <laughs> I like it. Number four, the one with the prom video. The camera adds 10 pounds. Uh, so how many cameras are actually on you? <laughs> this season two episode has one of Joey and Chandler's best storylines, when they're eternally bonded as bracelet buddies. Check it out, we're bracelet buddies. <laughs> That's what they'll call us. However, it's the development between Ross and Rachel that made the episode David Schwimmer's personal favorite. After numerous attempts to win Rachel back after his infamous pros and cons list, Ross begins to accept that they'll never be a couple. That all changes after watching a prom video, which features a pre-rhinoplasty Rachel and a curvier Monica, not to mention Ross rocking an afro and a porn stash. The video ends in heartache as Ross misses his shot with Rachel. This benefits Ross in the present, though, as Rachel officially becomes his lobster. This wasn't their first kiss, but it perhaps left the greatest impact. Her lobster. Number three, the one where no one's ready. Look, I don't care. It starts at eight. We can't be late. And he could not, would not want to wait. <laughs> Friends was an ensemble piece that fired on all cylinders thanks, above all else, to its six leads. Few episodes better demonstrate this than the one where no one's ready. You hide my clothes, I'm wearing everything you own. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that is so not the opposite of taking somebody's underwear! Almost solely taking place in Monica's apartment, this bottle episode makes impeccable use of the entire cast. With Joey and Chandler feuding over a chair, Rachel unsure of what to wear, Phoebe struggling to hide a hummus stain, and Monica stressing over an answering machine message, the dilemmas start off small, but snowball into something much bigger. Maybe we could call the phone company. Maybe they could change the message. Maybe they could change his number. Yeah, I think after this, he'll be doing that himself. This adds to the urgency as Ross tries to get everybody out the door in a story that plays out in real time. It additionally includes some of the show's best one-liners, especially Joey's commando remark. Look at me, I'm Chandler. Could I be wearing any more clothes? <laughs> Maybe if I wasn't going commando. 
Number 2. The One Where Everybody Finds Out Another ensemble-driven episode, this uproarious half-hour finds Phoebe and Rachel doing everything in their power to out Chandler and Monica as a couple. They thought that they could mess with us? They're trying to mess with us? <laughs> they don't know that we know they know we know. <laughs> Meanwhile, poor Joey winds up stuck in the middle of their face-off, while an oblivious Ross goes to great lengths to get ugly naked guy's apartment. It all builds to a side-splitting showdown as Phoebe uses her sexuality to break Chandler who ultimately folds and confesses his love to Monica in a truly touching moment. Okay, 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 you, you, you win. <laughs> I can't have sex with you. And why not? Because I'm in love with Monica. But the payoffs don't end there, as Ross finds out about his sister and best friend in the worst way possible. No. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Get off my sister! Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. The one with all the Thanksgivings. Turkeys on heads and missing toes. This is what Thanksgiving's all about. It's too late. All we can do now is sew up the wound. Without my toe, I need my toe. Hi. <laughs> I can go really fast. Dad, give me the keys to your Porsche. Oh, I'm not falling for that one. The one where Rachel has a baby. The episode that won Aniston an overdue Emmy. Do we have a name yet? No, not yet. That's fine. For now, we'll just call her Baby Girl Green. Oh no, Baby Girl Killer Green. The one with Phoebe's wedding. Phoebe and Mike, the show's most underrated couple. I got married! <laughs> Could someone get me a code? I'm freaking freezing. The one with the routine. How has this not become a trend on TikTok yet? <laughs> The one where the stripper cries. Danny DeVito wanted to strip even further. If only the show aired on HBO. Oh, this is so hot! <laughs> oh, no, no, don't stop! Have to. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The One with the Embryos Name that grandmother! <laughs> Nana? She has a real name. <laughs> Althea! Althea! What are you doing? I took a shot. You're shooting with Althea? Althea is correct. By shooting! It's only fitting that our top pick would go to the episode that made the best use of the six co-stars. Determined to figure out who knows more about the other, Joey and Chandler go head-to-head -head against Monica and Rachel in a high-stakes guessing game. With Ross taking his rightful place as Quizmaster, the four are asked a series of personal and hysterical questions. What was Monica's nickname when she was a field hockey goalie? Big Fat Goalie. Correct. <laughs> But of course, it's Monica and Rachel's inability to name Chandler's job that costs them their apartment. Oh. No! Yes! Despite the constant feuding, the friends reconcile upon learning that Phoebe is going to have her brother's baby. My sister's gonna have my baby! With a terrific premise, ingenious punchlines, and every cast member bringing the funny, this is Friends at its finest. It also sets up one of Phoebe's best arcs, culminating with her giving birth to triplets. Okay, I'll settle for being your favorite aunt. I know Alice's sister has a pool, but you lived in me. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.